Okay. Nothing is more euphoric than exponentially rising in popularity. For many e-celebrities, their initial growth spike is one of their most fond memories. The blow-up moments couple with collaborations, and suddenly your comment section of 10 to 15 regulars is graced with new fans every single day. Suddenly, all eyes are on you. Suddenly, everything you do is met with a microscope. Some YouTubers blow it, some don't know how to handle it, and some will thrive for years to come. Today's topic of choice is not one of those people. In fact, I've spoken about this creator before. Well, since July, this creator has called upon my credibility, making claims of behind-the-scenes harassment that are unfounded, and he questions the validity of my video for very questionable reasons. With that in mind, I've decided to go ahead and perform an autopsy of sorts. Today, we're embarking on a journey, a deep dive. Let's reintroduce ourselves to Anand Verk, or Bunty King. I don't understand your obsession. I don't understand it at all. I don't get it. I don't get it. You guys just can't seem to have any fun. Hello, my sweet goats, and welcome to another Let's Talk. Today, we are gonna talk about bullying, a subject that I am all too familiar with because I feel like I've been bullied for the majority of my life. Dude, you're a fucking Dungeons and Dragons nerd, dude. You're not gonna do nothing. All your tough fucking talk, you're not gonna bust a damn grape. You're not gonna run up. Just saturate me, give me a shower. Make my stinky ass smell pretty. And uh, at the end there, he says, no shit. Okay, I've got, I've got fucking standards. What you gonna do? You're not gonna do shit. Stop it. Just what, make more aggressive videos? You ain't gonna run up. You run up on me, I'll tie your beard into a fucking ponytail. You ever run up on me? <laughs> the fuck out of here. Uh, we, can we can never be drugged down this far. <laughs> no matter what happens. Yes. This is an, a cell phone of epic proportions. Our show could go up in, in flames and just completely be a smoking crater, and it would never it would never be this bad. You're a phony anti-SGW. You're a phony liberal. You've been out of a fucking job for months. You've had your girlfriend supporting you, and because you still have this dream to cling on being a social media personality. Gobble, gobble, Turkey Tom. Hey, I checked out your timeline. It seems like uh, you, you feel like quitting when people with low quality content or low effort content get more views than you. So uh, how about you do yourself and everybody else a favor and just fucking quit YouTube already. How about that, huh? Something I love more than anything is a good deep dive. Internet history is such an interesting topic to me, and for that reason, picking the brains of various e-celebrities is a fun hobby of mine. When one attempts to do a deep dive in a creator's content, it's pivotal that that content exists to actually dive into. You may find yourself researching an interesting situation from just a few years ago, only to find that accounts have been suspended, evidence was deleted, and entire portions of various situations have been scrubbed away entirely. That's what you'll find when you research Bunty King. Because much of Bunty's back catalog is private, channels who covered him have been terminated, and so much from his days on the skeptic side of YouTube seem to be wiped away for one reason or another. Luckily, I've done the dirty work, and I've dug up as much of it as I could possibly archive for both your viewing pleasure and to serve as a what not to do for any aspiring creator who's hit with the gift of an influential platform seemingly out of left field with no idea how to operate it. You know, every time I do one of these right here, all right, where I'm not wearing a shirt and I'm talking to you guys, someone, someone will be like, put on a shirt. You put on a fucking shirt, okay? I'm happy. I'm fine here without my shirt. The oldest video uploaded onto the Bunty King channel is titled as my very first video. Hello, this is uh, the, the Bunty King. This is my first video ever. I have been, uh, you know, trying but trying to play games uh, since I've come to this country just, you know, to try out what a, what a be culture about here, you know. I had, uh, I didn't really have very many video games in, uh, in, uh, in, in my home village of Banwarpur. We had a very, we had a, we had a, we had like a, a, an arcade cabinet. This was dated as far back as February 10th, 2015, and it was just a little bit of gameplay featuring a fairly stereotypical portrayal of an Indian male. The character the Canadian e-celebrity was portraying is a very different Bunty King than the one that would garner incredible support at a record pace in the coming years. All right, guys, what's up? What's going on? Here it is, your friend Bunty King, all right? You guys wanted a room tour, huh? A room tour? 
<laughs> well, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a little setup tour. It's gonna be pretty good, right? It's gonna be pretty good. From the videos that are still public, it's pretty clear to me the Bunty King channel in 2015 and early 2016 had appeared to have been a primarily gaming channel centering around the early Bunty King character through his series Indian Vlog Life and some unlisted live streams that will likely be privated now that I've mentioned they exist. His channel was at approximately 4,000 subscribers on January 1st, 2016. At that time, this gaming-focused channel had appeared to be nothing short of a passion project. However, Anand Virk was retweeted by Colossal is Crazy in October of 2016, and back then, that's really all it took. As a result, in early 2017, Bunty King would transform his channel sharply, and it would really evolve his brand completely. By this point, the Bunty King character, if it even was a character, was less of a stereotype and basically just what people perceived Anand Virk's real personality to be. He stuck to his roots, though. He called his fan base his sweet goats, but gone was the stereotypical Metro PCS sounding Indian accent. He had begun his Let's Talk series, and notable videos from this time had been the problems with YouTube commentary, Let's Talk, bullying, Let's Talk, and the infamous I'm a cuck, Let's Talk, which I assume you're all familiar with. It's no secret that all three of these videos have aged absolutely horribly, just as many videos from his early 2017 back catalog have as well. I only read your articles to spot the spelling mistakes and then make fun of you. For example, if we dissect his take on the YouTube commentary community for just a moment, you may find some really interesting takes that seem pretty ironic when we watch them back. You're not gonna find 40 year olds who have been established in the TV industry or film industry on YouTube as often as you will find younger people. And because they're younger, they're also less morally developed and that doesn't make them bad. It just makes that means, it means exactly what it means. They're less morally developed. Um, people like myself, people like Leon, people like um, uh, he, he, people like Tommy C, even though Tommy C can really go off his rocker, he just, I, li I like him, he's funny. Because I, I see, I, re I, I see what he's doing, I see what he's doing. People like Tommy C, people like Dead on Dave, people like Colossal, you know, we have, uh, our, we have, our, our moral senses are a little bit, a little bit more in tune with reality. That's right. Bunty King saw himself as more morally developed than many of the 2017 commentators at the time. And this is just a hilarious argument that you should probably just tuck away in the back of your mind as we progress. It is a fucked up place. Uh, a lot of people seem to be going at each other. Uh, people who I thought were friends are going at each other. Um, and a lot of them are being manipulated by uh, the overlord Keemstar, who we're going to go ahead and talk about in a little bit. Um, but I think that essentially all the issues come down to one word, and, and, that, and that word is ego. Uh, I guess two words, egos and personas. <laughs> and egos, while on their own, are totally cool. An ego that's unchecked turns into something very stupid. And an ego that's unchecked is also very fragile, by the way very, very fragile. So he thinks one of the biggest problems on YouTube was egos and personas. Well, I'd say the easiest contradiction to draw here is the stereotypical Indian persona that he was playing less than a year prior, but that's probably not what he means. No, the real question is, what is the concept of Bunty King as a whole? Is Bunty King a character Anand is playing, or is Bunty King just a screen name that Anand Virk uses? Well, if you ask Bunty, he's very forward with the fact that he is not acting. This is all him, he's real, and he's always been. I dislike the guy quite a bit. I don't hate him, but I dislike him. And I I, I, I don't even necessarily dislike him for the stupid shit that comes out of his mouth, because it's, at least at some degree, that's entertaining. I dislike him for the fact, and I really fucking dislike him for the fact, actually. This is this is something that really pissed me off. And and, and if, if people, when people do this, I, get, I really cringe, I cringe, man. It's, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. He chalks up his shit attitude to his persona. <laughs> Everybody knows that you don't have a persona. You are just an asshole, dude. That's really what it comes down to. So why don't you just own up to it? Own up to it like I own up to everything that I fucking put online. My opinion online is my opinion in real life. The person that you see here is the person that you are gonna fucking get in real life. It's as simple as that. Because I don't have a persona. Because I understand how personas work. I know that you're either using your persona to say what you really feel online, and your persona is really you, or your persona is a fake, and eventually that persona is gonna fall apart because the real you is gonna come through. Especially when you start gaining influence, especially when you realize that you're dealing with people. 
That's the way it fucking works. Well, three years later, I myself am not convinced. In fact, I'm fairly convinced of the opposite. As if the forced fake laughs didn't give it away enough, as we progress, I would make the argument that not only is Bunty a character that Anand was playing, but he eventually broke character and was just never the same again. <laughs> NOTHING LIKE ME! 2017 was an excellent year for Bunty King, seeing him double his subscriber count on YouTube from 20,000 in January to 40,000 by the 4th of July. He appeared on Hot Wet Soup twice with Zapped High, Elvis the Alien, Bionic Pig, and eventually Leon Lush. Bunty King was also invited to be on the No Jumper podcast with Adam22, and this was just a massive opportunity for him. However, Bunty King didn't blow up because of YouTube commentary. He blew up because of political commentary commentary. Eventually, he would find himself working with guys like Andy Warski, Ian Miles Chung, Sargon of Akkad, Kraut and T, and a few others whose careers, ironically enough, would also be fairly damaged just a few years later. He used his growing YouTube channel, coupled with his growing Twitter, to really maximize his success and influence during this time. Bunty's Twitter had begun to receive millions of impressions per month, and he started to really become a Twitter reply guy. Bunty seemed to have taken after Ricky Berwick, utilizing Twitter videos to reach a much larger audience and get more eyes on yourself. Looking back at Bunty's career, Bunty's YouTube and Twitch really played second fiddle to his Twitter account, which was honestly his bread and butter. I'm sure there's a wide range of people who only knew him and maybe still only know him as that guy who was making satirical reply content on Twitter. Twitter videos are like my main thing, like just, you know, two minutes, hit the, like, just get the point in and that's it. It's like a new thing for, for like vloggers and stuff where you, you know, get somebody like, Keemstar, who's like so quick to like bust out 60 seconds of thought when you know, people are like I know Keemstar and I are like Keemstar myself and another wow, guy. Wow, you guys are exactly the same. You've just like been like you had the brightness turned down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but like, people say that all the time, and it's funny because Keemstar at one point called me out. He was like, "Yo, you're you're just a fucking reply girl. All you do is just reply to people with a video, and obviously when you show up with your video, it goes to the top. But what he you know he omitted was that." I'm only gonna grow if people like me. If I do Twitter videos, there's plenty of people who respond with fucking two minute videos and they don't blow, like blow up. And he does have a point here. However, that goes both ways. The second people no longer like you or like what you're doing, it stops working. And at some point, this gimmick ends. You're gonna have to have actual content that compels people to stay. Otherwise, your growth is really unsustainable. The fact that he compares himself to Keemstar here is interesting because at this point, both Bunty and Keemstar were making Twitter videos, that is true. However. However, Keemstar wasn't just Twitter videos. Keemstar had Drama Alert. Keemstar had the Baited Podcast. He had his hands into multiple different business ventures that wouldn't be too clear until 2019. Bunty King was very much just his Twitter at this moment in time. Well, Bunty's new avenue of political commentary and reply videos placed him right in the crosshairs of the walking parody himself, Tariq Nasheed. Hey, I gotta say this. I feel like, I feel like there's some people here that maybe take things a little bit too seriously. This is a joke. Anytime I post anything that sounds slightly aggressive, unless you see my face in, the, in a video form where I actually look visibly distressed, it's a joke. All right, I'm just joking around. At this point, Bunty's entire act was criticism with a smile. He would make various arguments being very critical, but he would do it through goofing on people and not taking himself too seriously. He's literally known for his outlandish laugh. Bunty King often mentioned that he was trying to promote an open dialogue and where other political speakers would send hate mobs and harassment campaigns, Bunty would send his detractors hugs. This is what really set him apart and made him so infuriating for people who disagreed with him. I recorded a video of me yelling his name into the camera. I was just like, Tariq, Tariq, Tariq. <laughs> and then like, and then Al I'm Alex coming in with the memes, like, you know, just like everyone's yeah. like memeing. And like, and you know, I was drunk, so I'm like telling Leon I want to suck his dick, and I'm like, oh, like yo, Leon, let me suck your dick, nigga. Classic, I was like, he's really stupid. So when he got into altercations with the hyper serious black supremacist Alex Jones parody, it was really interesting to watch it unfold in real time. Tariq was known for his outlandish accusations, calling people like Philip DeFranco suspected white supremacists. He was even very hostile to black people, calling them derogatory terms such as coon or bedwenches to label 
anyone who didn't support his incredibly, incredibly insane ideas. Something I'll remember Tariq for was his hot fire beats on his single Wash Yo Ass before he became this activist. Tariq actually uploaded a video roasting Bunty, which to this day, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. And another thing, Cunty, that's what your new name is, Cunty Queen. All that tough talk you're doing, I, I, people are saying you're talking real tough and you're talking real threatening and all this. You're not going to do a fucking thing, dude. Just stop. You dig? I don't go over there to India kicking over curry goat and shit. You don't disrespect my fucking country and the American citizens out here in a state where I pay big taxes with your bitch ass. Just because you want to suck white dick and get semen stains on your beard, your bitch ass nigga. Nigga, I steal your camel. Fuck out of here. Oh, nigga, I'll make you get your accent back, my boy. What the fuck you gonna do? All that tough talk. Eventually, the drama reached its peak when Bunty was inevitably suspended, which we have come to realize is really the only possible outcome when dealing with a blue check mark on Twitter. Blue check marks are clearly protected by Twitter. This is nothing new, but it actually was the best case scenario for Bunty. I don't think anyone here would argue with me that June 2017 was the climax of Bunty's career on the platform. Everything all year was building up to this moment, and by an act of God, Bunty's fast growing Twitter account was suspended four days before VidCon. If you aren't aware, VidCon is one of the largest YouTuber meetups ever, at least in the United States, and 2017's in particular is widely regarded as the best one. Bunty getting suspended after his altercation with Tariq Nasheed days before a massive YouTuber meetup made this dude a household name in the community, and all eyes were on Bunty all weekend long. He was dunking on SJWs like Anita Sarkeesian. All right, listen, Anita, Ali, you know, the fact that Sargon of Akkad is sitting in front of you. Like, I mean, who cares he was sitting in front of you? I know he should have probably sat in the back. Thinking about it now, he probably should have sat in the back. I, but, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, listen, we were just excited. We were excited. We wanted to give you guys the opportunity that you don't give us. We wanted to hear you guys out. He was dunking on alt writers, like no bullshit. As you guys can see, VidCon is pretty hype. He was dunking on Tariq Nasheed. Hey, dude. Listen, yo, you keep suggesting that I'm some kind of tokenized brown dude. Can you please fucking stop it? You keep telling me about Stormfront and all that bullshit <laughs> and how these white supremacists keep tokenized fucking brown people. You think that I'm some dopey dude that got fresh, that was fresh off the fucking boat? That, <laughs> that, that Sargon of a car decided, hey, I'm gonna pick up this fucking packy here and take a photo with? No, he came over to my place, you fucking moron. I have a brown friend. Did you see this? He was really dunking on Tariq Nasheed. Hey, Tariq! This is what happens when you fuck with the house full of the suspected hey, white supremacists oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck you! Fuck you, Tariq! Shut the fuck up! Fuck you, Don't try it! All while his channel was exploding, and opportunities seemed to be limitless on the horizon. The Twitter audience he had briefly lost had been replaced with one that would grow to be bigger, and the entire community had his back. What he would learn very quickly was, it's really easy to succeed when the entire community has your back. When they don't, well, that's another story. I would be remiss if I didn't remind my core audience that this gamer gone political commentator actually got the chance to be featured in a video game of his own at the time. This game, of course, if you haven't guessed it, was Hunt Down the Freeman. He was one of the... <laughs> He was one of many famous e-celebrities who was able to land his vocals for the project that, through no fault of his own, disappointed nearly everyone and became one of the biggest memes in YouTube history. Attack! Now! Fall back! Forward! Fall back! Fall back! Fall back! Fall back! I got one! You'll die! You'll die! I'll fucking kill you! I'll kill you! I'll kill- I'll kill you! I guarantee it. Forward! You see him? I need backup! I need some backup! Get me some backup! Ah! Ah! I've been shot! Fuck! They shot me! Fuck! I've been hit! I'm hit! Is that all you got? Fire! Fire! Open fire! Open fire! Ah! Ah! So that was Bunty's success story. It's pretty easy to have a success story when the only publicized interactions you've had were with targets as easy as Tariq Nasheed, who was quite literally the difficulty equivalents of having a feud against a guy screaming Bible verses and consuming garbage from Penn Station. 2018 would mark the beginning of Bunty King's decline before his full-scale collapse in 2019. So... 
<laughs> what happened? I'm a cock. <laughs> I'm a fucking cock. You know, I, I do see... You're different, Bunty. You, you, you're, you seem a little different. You're, you were, you were, I don't want to say goofy, like, like to disparage you, but you were a little more. Hey, I'm Bunty King, and there's Ginger dancing. Give me one of my favorite memes. <laughs> oh, no, Will, dude, Will, Will, I, I can do that, no problem. You're like, pissed. I trust me. I've got, I've got posts lined up. Like, I'm, I'm not yeah. pissed right now. I'm just, just, I'm being serious right you're now. Just being serious. <laughs> I'm just being you serious. You can't wait, wait, wow, wow, wow. Do they see a brown guy that isn't shitting in the streets? A brown guy that's able, to, able to get fucking white pussy whenever he fucking. <laughs> Many of his initial dramas were over content that was initially uploaded earlier in his career when he was just starting to pick up traction. The first video we're going to discuss, and probably the video he's most known for, is I'm a cuck, let's talk. Now I've briefly discussed this video before and many of you have already seen it in its entirety, but for the love of god I cannot stress enough how weird this is. This wasn't some cringe video from when he was younger, this wasn't some goof video where he was parodying something, this video wasn't from the dawn of the internet where people just didn't know the repercussions of posting something like this. This video was uploaded in 2017. Bunty King actually thought this was a good idea to post and discuss his story of being cheated on to his new commentary audience. It's just such a fucking weird video. He constantly uses the word crush and other language which no fucking adult uses. I got messaged by a girl, my, currently my ex-girlfriend, uh, who, and she said, I think you're really hot and funny. Uh, and I was like, holy shit, I was amazed because for me, uh, I had had a crush on her for a long time and not like an active crush on, uh, on her where I would like reach out to her regularly. Like I was only talking to her again, like, and like, like I said, in June, like when that, when VidCon happened, I was talking to her. Uh, so when she messaged me, I was like, holy shit, I got, I got to capitalize on this because I fucking have a crush on this girl. That'd be amazing. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to be in Toronto soon, which I didn't need to be, but I was like, let's go for a walk. It sounds like we're talking to a 27 year old, 11 year old because nobody is age says things like that. But Bunty King isn't just a cuck because he got on camera to give us a sob story that his girlfriend wasn't really his girlfriend. And that's when she revealed something very huge to me. And that was the fact that she was in a relationship the whole time. She's been caught in a loveless relationship. She doesn't love the guy. She doesn't feel anything for him, supposedly. Um, she, she loves me more, supposedly. She thinks I'm the best, that he doesn't hold up a candle to me, supposedly. Bunty King is a cuck because he literally apologizes to the girl who was fucking another guy because he claims that he made her feel a certain way that allowed her to consider doing this. This is the kind of guy I am. This is how much I loved her. I said, it's okay, baby. Don't worry about it. I understood why you didn't tell me. I understood why you didn't, you hid this from me. I'm sorry that you had to feel this way. I'm sorry that you were so anxious. I'll I'll go through this with you. I just want you. I want you at the end of this. I just want you. Oh, now we're getting ahead of ourselves. Did I mention that before we even get here, he explained extensively how he would take this woman back if he has the opportunity? Do not uh, think of her as a bad person because she isn't. She isn't. She's one of the most beautiful people I've ever met. And even now, I'm very much in love with her. And if she called me right after I uploaded this video, uh, and said, uh, please take me back, I would take her back in a second. And that's also another reason why I don't want to say her name because I don't want you guys uh, running her name through the mud after that, if that were to happen, which I don't think is going to happen, honestly. This isn't even all the crazy shit he says in it. Bunty King in his Me So Hornet shirt take all the time to explain to his audience how great he was despite his cheating girlfriend. I didn't feel like a guy that was worth fully committing to because the other guy apparently is worth fully committing to, to be involved with regularly, on the regular, day in and day out, get to see each other on the weekend, go to grocery shopping, go to the fucking movies, go to family dinners, that guy is worth it. But not me, I'm just the guy that gives a good fuck and eats good pussy. That's pretty much what I am. And in that, he explained how he didn't get to do all those things that you'd typically find in a relationship because they would just fuck and the other guy would get to meet the family. You know, the typical boyfriend-girlfriend stuff. I have to ask, Bunty, were there any major holidays passing that she was, like, noticeably absent from? Did you not notice the woman you were dating was, oddly enough, not free many days of the week because you didn't do any of the things? Like, I find it hard to believe you were so surprised you were being lied to. In an argument myself and Bunty had, Bunty questioned whether this was some kind of permanent own from three years ago, and if he's expected to just take criticism about this video till the end of time, and to that I say, 
yeah, what would you expect me to say? This video is fucking insane, man, and any normal human being likely wouldn't have filmed this, let alone had the thought process to upload it on their YouTube channel. However, because it's so bad and I'm such a good person, I decided to give Bunty some help. I might be three years late and the damage might already be done, but someone needs to give this man a wake-up call. And man, this is so incredibly sad, and I feel like I need to do my part. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna be the guy to make this pep talk because, well, you probably wouldn't want to hear it from me, right? I wouldn't if I was you. So with that in mind, I paid a YouTuber who often gets himself into other major controversies kind of like this very one, and sometimes he tells his audience just a little too much. I and and, and and, am I pronouncing that right? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's me, Francis. Listen, dude, this cameo was booked by your friend Nick, and Nick said that recently you found out that your girlfriend was cheating on you? Well, let me tell you something, okay? When somebody cheats in a relationship, what they's doing is, what they's doing, they're, they're hitting the eject button, all right? They're getting the hell out of that relationship. And when somebody breaks up with you, they are doing you the best thing they could possibly do because they don't respect you. They don't like you. They don't love you, okay? They cheated on you. They're a piece of shit. You are literally taking out the garbage. It, it, no, that's the garbage taking itself the fuck out, okay? Just to be clear, Boogie had no idea what he was filming that for, so please don't put it on your fucking gigantic Reddit page, you fucking monsters. Jokes oh. aside, at this point in 2018, he had found himself the target of Mr. Mediker and Ethan Ralph's Killstream program, among many more fans who were making their own videos. For the first time, Bunty King found himself in a drama against people who don't spend their time calling women bed wenches and tweeting at suspected white supremacists. For the first time, he was entering a drama with someone who was actually kind Competent. And for the first time, the community wasn't rushing to defend him. This is Bunty's definitive sink or swim moment. He's being targeted by a group of people he strongly disliked. And if you need proof, here's him joining a famous Discord server that is aimed at discrediting these very people from a year prior. But enough of that for now, we will get there. However, I'm not trying to jump any guns here. I'm trying to enjoy this. So where was I? Oh yeah, sink or swim moment. So what'll it be? Sink or... He sank. He sank like a rock. Let me explain. Now, we're going to be exploring this in the order of which the video was found, and not when it was released. You'll see why in a minute if you don't understand what I'm saying, you'll get it. So following Medicare's streams, Bunty issued this Twitter video as his first response to defend himself from the criticism surrounding, I'm a cuck, let's talk. I'm gonna say that this is the last time that I'm actually gonna be addressing this publicly. I'm not gonna make a dedicated video about it on my channel. It doesn't fucking matter. It's, it's a dead topic to me, it really is. Um, uh, but for those of you guys who are completely, completely unaware, uh, <laughs> uh, almost two years ago, I put, I put out, I, I, I went through a pretty rough breakup. I, I, it was a breakup in which I found out that I was, for lack of better words, I guess being cheated on. She was in a relationship with somebody else while she was dating me, and that fucking destroyed me. It destroyed, I did, it's never happened to me before. I did not know how to handle it, and, uh, <laughs> Uh, one of the ways I handled it was by making a video. <laughs> I wouldn't do that again today because, you know, it's just some things that you just should probably just deal with, you know, with your friends IRL instead of having to go to the internet with it. But I left her name out and, uh, you know, and then I also followed up that video that I made, which is called I'm, I'm a Cuck, uh, with I'm not a cuck, and uh, in which I kind of come to terms with the fact that something happened to me and I'm just going to move on. And I did, I just moved on, so that's it, I moved on. And now people are talking about it like it's, like it's fucking news. You guys are talking about this video like it's news, bro. Old news! Old news! Nobody gives a fuck! Bunty debunks Medicare's commentary, quote-unquote, by saying it was basically just a lapse in judgment, he didn't know how to handle it, people shouldn't care all of a sudden about a video that came out a year and a half ago, I guess this was just an isolated incident, and if it was, I could really try and see what he was saying here, but it just flat out wasn't. He also mentions a second video called, I'm not a cuck, let's talk, in a tweet and directly in the Twitter video. This was his chronological first response to the I'm a cuck video that came out a few weeks prior. Hello my sweet goats and uh, welcome to another Let's Talk guys. I would like to go ahead, give you guys an update on 
a situation that I covered in one of my videos three weeks ago now and and you guys were just so excellent of course in conjunction with the feedback I was receiving from uh, my friends uh, in regards to this situation uh, was that was that you know this woman had no respect for me why why would I even ever, why would I ever consider going back to her and of course I knew this like a day after I uploaded the video because I saw the comments saw talk, spoke to my friends I was like yeah that makes hundred that makes perfect sense it makes perfect sense <laughs> <laughs> just it's beautiful so there's a lot to unpack here first and foremost he mentioned his friends were getting right into his dms to tell him what i just hired boogie to tell him and he said he knew a day after keep that in mind because we're gonna come back to it but in this video something really interesting happened some men did stop by to kind of drop their uh their their uh their comments on the video in regards to how weak of a person i was being and uh, and i shouldn't be such a bitch and uh i think that i think that those people can go ahead and fuck themselves <laughs> <laughs> those fucking useless losers. It's funny because when they go ahead and see someone like me talking so openly about my emotions, they of course will go ahead and be like, a beta male? The reality is that those people are the beta males. The real alphas are the ones that are, are, are totally fine with being emotional. Because when shit hits the fan, people like me are the ones that are gonna make, make moves. Those guys are gonna run. And those guys are gonna go ahead and repress themselves. Those guys are gonna not confront their, their issues. And they're just gonna have shit lives. That's, that's what I truly believe. If you don't like videos like I'm a cuck, let's talk, you're not in tune with your emotions and your life is going to suck. Guys who apologize to their girlfriends for banging another guy are the real alphas. What the fuck? The entire Twitter argument he had with a fellow YouTuber, Jay Longbone, who has also covered this story quite extensively, was pretty interesting as well. I encourage you to read it because he claims he's not embarrassed of that video at all. So to summarize, in the Twitter video, Bunty told Medicare's fans about this video, which was from over a year prior. It mentions the hate and the criticism he was receiving at the time of the original upload, and it appears on the Wayback Machine that the comments were disabled on both videos. It's clear that he was getting some shit and red flags were going off back then that he just decided to ignore. In response to the many comments and criticisms that Bunty had received, he basically said that any detractors are the real beta males and their lives are gonna be terrible um okay but of course it gets worse i don't care about i don't like you know it's funny like my last girlfriend was like you know and that was a really fucked up relationship because she, mm -hmm. she really fucked that up she was instrumental in actually uh breaking down my political correctness because before i met her i was like super pc and and then so she started like we would call each other faggots and it was like so nice i thought that was so beautiful i was like oh my mm -hmm. god like it's so nice to call her a faggot and she calls me a faggot and yeah, yeah, it was that's nuts. Like, it was nuts. Yeah, yeah that's uh, like the was, kind of. Really um, awesome. was... That's kind of how I am with with wearing. Like, we rip into each other all the time. It's that kind of. I don't know. I thought... No, it wasn't like ripping. It wasn't ripping into each other. It was like really yeah. like this. Like it was super sexually charged. It was also like just like pure like romance in the sense that she would be like she would like 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 I won't like she hasn't talked to me in about like uh, a little while now and. The reason why she hasn't talked to me is because she's really trying to keep her distance because she knows that she's fucked up. She knows that she's she fu she fucked up. She knows I'm growing my platform. She knows that I'm I'm, I'm making something of myself, and she doesn't want to weigh me down. And on being and talking to her did weigh me down quite a bit because it was it was really hard because like I would want to whenever she had a moment where she was feeling bad about herself, I wanted to make mm -hmm. her feel good, and I would do this at, at expense at the expense of myself. Yeah, I stopped thinking about myself, but it was like it was like really crazy because like sh like we would say crazy shit to each other. Like I was like I was like I want you to fucking piss on me. Like I'm not even <laughs> fucking joking. I'd look at her. I want you to fucking piss on me. This is the one girl that could piss on me. Like I would fucking <laughs> let her pee on my dick any day. It was amazing. On the dick. I was like I never I never on the dick <laughs> on the chest. I don't give a fuck. Like I've never been into peeing for like okay. for like sex stuff. But I was right. like I was like if you want to pee on me, you can pee on me. I don't give a fuck. That's how much I loved her. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the only thing is like no shitting. But this is the first girl, like the first girl who like oh, oh, I've done like ass play with. Like it was fucking great. Now wait a minute. Now wait just a goddamn minute. What's the date on this? We're in July 2017. Remember earlier in this video, the biggest month of Bunty's career, July 2017. So now we're still talking about Bunty's cheating girlfriend. Literally four months later, except this time it's a bit different. Look, man, maybe I could come to your defense on the first one saying all right you were new but i don't think i could come to your defense after the second cuck video for me that's a bit too much but this dude waited four months to get on a podcast with sugar tits and explain how he liked when the woman who 
let's remind you, cheated on him, and we're discussing how he liked it when she urinated on him. Dude, what the fuck? But it doesn't stop there. It's not even the only podcast where Bunty would continue to discuss his love for urine with the woman who literally cucked him. But uh, I'm hoping that one day that'll just like kind of be resolved and, and things will just go back to normal because we were, we were really quite a good item together. Uh, and uh, in terms of like, uh, in terms of like, I was, yeah, I, I love, like, it's, it was just the best. It was just the best. <laughs> Eating her butt was amazing. It was just the, wonderful. I'm sorry. What, what did he say there? Did he say... Did he say eating her butt was amazing? Yeah, I think that's the first time I like first time I've ever done it, and uh, and I just remember that the first time we like did it, she was like, I was like, I was like, I want to eat your ass. Like I don't, she didn't ask me. I was like, <laughs> no, no, like I want to eat your ass. Like I've never wanted to do this. Like I let her fucking pee on me. I don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> I'm into every like with her. I'm into everything. Like with other girls, um, I look at them. I'm like, eh, you know, it, 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 it's something bad. Like I love eating pussy, okay? Mm -hmm. But there's been girls that I've I've come across where I'm just like, ah, I don't know if I should eat their pussy, and that's a bad sign because I love eating pussy. What the actual fuck am I watching, Bunty? Perfect. You can't make four minor lapses in judgment. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. After the cuck videos, Bunty made the conscious decision to go and make these legendary clips on other people's live streams. Well, I mean, I, I just respond to it like, like I'm just like, who is this loser? Like, what are you doing? Like, who yeah, see, do I don't do that. I want to compete with them. I want to out loser them. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, for me, I'm, a, I'm, I'm trying to actually, uh, um, find ways to monetize the haters. I'm trying to find really? ways to, uh, like, I'm thinking of, uh, toilet paper with my face on it, so if you... <laughs> yeah, like, right, here you go. And you can wipe, you can wipe your ass with my face, have fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of a, a, a t-shirt idea, specifically mm -hmm. for haters, people who don't like me, uh, so they can go ahead and buy a t-shirt and, yeah. and, and that's it. I mean, of course, obviously they won't buy it, but, I mean, at the end of the day, if... I'll be the one offering the best hater merch. You know? and, uh, <laughs> girls texting me to fucking cuddle, like, I, and I'm like, I'm telling them, I, I have to tell them no. Bunty wasn't just bad at knowing what to upload and knowing how much information is too much information to upload. The proud political centrist was also pretty bad at handling the political scene on YouTube, and he was bad at managing friendships. Some of the stuff I'm about to talk about is completely new information, and after speaking to a few of his detractors from 2017 and 2018, they have confirmed to me that if this information had been public, Bunty's career likely wouldn't have continued. Let me explain. I'm not unblocking you because you spam my Twitter feed with Twitter videos. And the reason why you do it is because you're hoping and praying that people see them and follow you. You're not responding to me because I tweet out something and you want to respond to that tweet. You're responding it to get attention. Like, I'm sorry that you're not talented. I'm sorry that you can't figure out, you know, a way to make a career. All right. But fucking spamming my Twitter and spamming my tweets, all right, isn't gonna cut it. You're blocked. Uh, the Indian dude with the beard that's trying to be like me, he's blocked. Ricky Berwick should be blocked, but I give him a pass because he's a retard. Um, anybody that does this shit, you're getting blocked. You are the 2017 reply girl. And quite frankly, I'm fed up with it. When I talk to other YouTubers, they're all fed up with it. And quite and the viewers are fed up with it. Like we all give Ricky a pass because he's a retard, but anybody else, you get him blocked. One of the core messages Bunty wanted to deliver was that he was a centrist who wanted to bridge the gap of dialogue between the left and the right. On No Jumper, when asked about Gamergate, he responded by saying this. Most of your, but so for most of your life, you didn't really have any like real political interest you're saying kind of at, at a certain point you just sort of mellowed out and were like whatever yeah i just wanted to fucking play games i wanted to like just fucking you know but did you uh did you take sides during like the gamer gate thing and stuff because there's a lot of like racial issues and social justice issues yeah, yeah, yeah. in the gaming now community. now, now, now it is, bring yeah. it, it's, it's poisoning the shit out of it it's fucking annoying but listen uh I, during gamer gate i was uh i was actually more pro like for like the women i felt bad for the women getting accosted but that's all that they reported on but then i found out that gamer gate was about you know, shady journalism mm -hmm. in the gaming industry. And like, and then I was like, oh, okay, well, there we go. You feel like you were kind of in the wrong at that point now? I feel like I wasn't in the wrong completely because there's people in Gamer Gamergate that were participating in fucking harassment, yeah. you know, and that was shit. But then I also realized that some of these video game journalists are fucking scummy. The whole point of that video was to open dialogue, mm -hmm. all right? Because if you retreat your safe spaces when people like Richard Spencer show up and his alt-right, or when people like Tariq Nasheed show up and his fucking black supremacists, 
you're gonna let them run shit if you mm -hmm. retreat your fucking safe space. So you gotta get the fuck out there and you gotta face their ideologies head on. That clip was from July of 2017, and in late 2017, during a debate with Destiny, he was very vocal about not wanting to find himself lumped in with his peers. You could say his reputation was very important to him. Somebody releases what is essentially Nazi propaganda, a Nazi propaganda anti-Semitic video, and then- Okay, well, that's, yeah, that's and a then little- Your defense is literally like, well, I met these guys in real life and most of them are nice. And also here's a funny message I sent him on Twitter and he said he wasn't anti-Semitic, so he must not be. Do you see how yeah, that's- well, like that, and, But that, you know, you know that that was like a joke, right? That's like something to play on the actual whole situation and kind of make people laugh and just ease people up a bit. I know okay, that like- but the difference is that when you guys have anybody on the left that makes even the slightest comment, you're like, yeah. literally like, this guy's trying to destroy Western- Des Destiny, what? Destiny, when you say you guys, are you really lumping me in with this? Because that's something that I do not do, and I have people that can actually attest for that. That's something that I really try to avoid doing. In fact, you know, because being a Canadian, like, there's, a, we are so far ahead in terms of the social game, in terms of gay rights, in terms of the fact that I grew up in a multi-ethnic city. Like, I had it rough in the 90s and going up and through the early 2000s, but after that, like, I was able to kind of, it was, it was easier for me. Like, I definitely have a sense of privilege in the sense that, like, I am, like, a Montrealer that's got that's living in Canada. Like an, a, an ethnic person living in Canada is so different from an ethnic person maybe living in certain parts of the States or parts of Europe, you know? Look, you fucking kid. I don't know what the fuck is going on. The clear and public reason would be the subject matter of the debate with Destiny. Bunty was brought into Destiny's stream, who at the time was enraged that a few out of context messages from years ago were enough for his detractors to immediately declare him to be a pedophile. Destiny was accused by known swatter and apolitical gremlin Ian Miles Chung directly of being a pedophile, and his argument was the alt-right and the skeptics are so quick to declare their political adversaries to be degenerates, but they make excuses for their own guys when something they say is deemed controversial. This statement was pretty fair, and Bunty did not do a good job of explaining his friend Ian's side. Exactly, so you're trying to establish this mentality of the uh, community, yeah. like, like, like holding them that to that it happens standard, right? Every, yeah, that it happens yeah, across yeah. his entire community. You could be doing it in a much fucking nicer way, bro. That's he all I'm saying. He started off the conversation I, I know, by so calling me a pedophile. Because, because people, because the thing is though, Steven, is that you're an easy guy to fucking hate. I'm sorry, I don't want to be this, I'm not being a dick here, I'm just saying that you're an easy guy to hate because you come off as very arrogant. So Bunty's plan of attack here was to say it's okay Destiny's being accused of being a pedo because, and this is true, he's apparently an easy guy to hate? What the fuck is that, Bunty? From every single person in the skeptosphere tweeting bullshit at me, and that includes the big people like Chris Raygun, like Thorin, like Armored Skeptic, like Richard Lewis, like all these fucking people tweeting at me, and you expect me to like take that all in a jolly jive, and then when these random fucking creeps come out of nowhere and start calling me a pedophile i'm supposed to engage them in in like uh uh in good conversation like do you have any idea how much you're asking from me that's really hard to do yeah and and uh yeah that's uh that's that is pretty intense you described quite a bit there that is very intense and i do apologize <laughs> for being a little bit insensitive. I guess I just come from a very privileged place. Bunty finishes the stream with a few more awkward laughs, but I don't think anyone was expecting Bunty's appearance on Destiny's show to end with him awkwardly apologizing for his insane statements. But that public fuck up wasn't the greater issue. These streams he appeared on were interesting for another reason entirely. See, these took place when Bunty was doing some very questionable things behind the scenes. When Bunty was claiming that he didn't want to be tied together with the skeptic community publicly. Behind the scenes, he was joining a Discord server, actually a very famous Discord server, that was dedicated to taking down and discrediting the alt-right. Destiny, when you say you guys, are you really lumping me in with this? Because When Bunty claimed he was a voice trying to bridge the gap and open a discussion through the political spectrum in public, he was encouraging the release of a YouTuber named Coach Red Pill's personal and identifying information in private. The whole point of that video was to open dialogue, mm -hmm. all right? At the time, Bunty was requesting multiple times when the docs would be published, and when Kraut and T showed signs of maybe not wanting to release the docs or, you know, not publish it at all, Bunty showed no signs of backing off. No, I'm not joking. He even stated that he'd support the docs when the time was right, but he wanted his name off it initially because he believed it could tarnish his public image. What the fuck? What? 
What the fuck? Okay, so in public, Bunty was a really nice guy who was probably a little less good at debates and a little less witty than maybe most of the community was giving him credit for, but behind the scenes, he was encouraging the release of private and identifying information to silence a political adversary. But it doesn't end there. First of all, this docs was published on Kiwi Farms. The YouTuber Kraut and T, who has publicly taken responsibility for gathering the docs, the very person that Bunty is speaking to in these DMs, at the time a friend of Bunty was accused of having an entire server filled with doxes. And if you're wondering, it's that exact server I showed you before that Bunty was happily joining. Up to this point, I haven't seen any evidence that creators other than Coach Red Pill had their personal information leaked, but that didn't stop Kraut's good friend Bunty from jumping into his DMs and saying this. I have to say, Kraut, I bear no ill will towards you, but I was thoroughly unimpressed with what went down in that server. It shook me to the core. My name and my reputation were placed in a precarious situation in the drama that ensued. You did, however, teach me a valuable lesson, and going forward, I will be more aware of the things I sign up to. I hope you had a fantastic new year and that you're doing well. I got a question, Bunty. How big of a backstabbing scumbag do you have to be to encourage a friend to release someone's docs and then be perfectly fine with it in private, only to jump in that same same person's DMs on Discord and grandstand like you weren't fucking okay with that. What a piece of shit. Now, if you read the very next message, Kraut denies that that server was used to dox and implied that CRP's dox was separate and unrelated. Bunty then responds by walking back that entire wall of text I just read you, and he basically just says, Yeah, I know that you weren't. I was just pissed, that's all. No worries. What a fucking asshole. If I didn't know any better, I would think he's fishing for a screen screenshot so he can show everybody he disavowed Kraut to try to hold on to his career. It's pretty fucking skeptical that Kraut's main accuser, Braving Ruin, vindicated Bunty of these allegations almost immediately back then. I don't know, it's just food for thought. You act like you didn't want to be associated and wrapped up with the skeptics publicly, yet you were. You act like you're above malpractice and you condemn the actions of your political adversaries publicly, and then you encourage the release of Coach Red Pill's docs behind the scenes. So, socially, Bunty wasn't really good at knowing what to say online and what to keep to himself. Politically, he wasn't very good, and he often folded to anyone who produced an actual challenge. Um, we, the video by Bunty, I talked to him in per- oh, um, hold on, actually. So, we've got, um, um, the real dumb shit king made a video, um, or not a video, but he made a video where he's like, oh, I think I've talked to him and he's cool, blah, 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 blah. He basically made like, I did a Project Veritas um, investigation to find out if M Mount, uh, Mouthy Buddha hates Jewish people. And it's like him like, hey, do you hate Jewish people? And then he responds to no. And he's like, oh, look, well, I proved it, right? Oh, and also this fucking idiot didn't even watch the fucking video. Big goats, now listen, uh, with all that's been said and done, uh, I finally got the opportunity to watch- Kill yourself, you fucking inbred. So he finally watches the video after defending this guy for like two days straight on, um, on Twitter. And then there's the issue of egos and personas that comes back around when Bunty is literally two completely different people in public and then in private. On top of that, he shows his first indicator that his career meant more than his friends. What he did to Kraut, honestly, is pretty fucked up. Suddenly, the massive success story for Bunty King looks like it was more of a lucky accident. Naturally, after a fall from grace of this magnitude and the decline of the fellow skeptics and YouTubers who supported him, it just got worse. Shortly after after this drama, Bunty denounced politics entirely. He privated any video that was remotely political and sharply changed his content back to video games. When the going got tough for Bunty, Bunty got going. After watching all of those friends he made at VidCon surpass him by hundreds of thousands of subscribers, he took to Twitter and started telling all these people who didn't give a shit how much it wasn't bothering him. So while I may be one of the biggest personalities you've ever met on the internet, in terms of audience size, uh, I can definitely say that I'm not one of the biggest creators you've ever met. There's people who were smaller than me before, who are way bigger than me now, and then there's people who I had met before who are way bigger than me today and were way bigger than me back then. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm a creator. I've always been a creator. It's something that I really do enjoy doing. I love creating things. I love, I love creating content. I love uh, writing shit. I, I love making videos. It's just, it's just fun shit for me. I have also realize that a lot of people do the same thing that I have done and that is approach content creation with a scarcity mindset and that's thinking you're in direct competition with everybody in a closed marketplace in a place where where there's a finite amount of views there's a finite amount of people to watch your content and to share your content 
But that's not the truth. The truth is, is that the internet is an ever-expanding place. There's more and more people coming online every single day and it's an ever-expanding pool of eyeballs. And to act like you're in direct competition with everyone else and that, that you're gonna run out of space or you're gonna run out of, of views is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You need to leave that behind. And I've recently started leaving that behind and I've not been worried, as worried about people getting more views than me or whatever. It's just, it's been more about putting out content. And if, if more people had this idea in their, in their heads, if more people thought, I'm just gonna create the content for for, for the people that are already watching it and, and, and the people that are passing by. And, and for me, I think that things would be a lot better. You'd have a lot less drama, you'd have a lot less people being angry, a lot less uh, stress. You'd put a lot less pressure on yourself, so. I don't know. The problem with transitioning his content is that thousands of people who came to see Bunty King subscribe for politics and YouTube drama, not live stream compilations and reasons why you should play mobile games. So this caused a major divide in his fan base. His social media accounts had begun to plummet and his YouTube channel started to die. He had watched himself cross 50,000 Twitter followers backwards and it ended up going as low as 47,000. This guy lost like 15,000 followers total. Bunty himself completely changed, he became bitter and the laugh he was famous for suddenly went away. He suddenly was a lot more short-tempered on social media. He literally was asking his fans from his political days to just leave, unfollow. Hey, well that's real easy then, you should just unfollow me, you fucking piece of shit. Saying that he wishes everyone from that time would just leave him alone. No? You don't no. do coke and shit? No, I did last year. Really? I was, But I don't like coke, man. Why? Because the high lasts 15 minutes, it's it's uneconomical, man. You gotta do more. Fuck that, bro, it's too expensive. He became the kind of guy who would insult Mr. Repsion for exposing Onision because it apparently showed that his behavior was the same as Bunty's previous detractors. Onision and Kai's young daughter fell from a second story bedroom window landing in the driveway. Now, no one wants to see a child injured, especially me, who spent much of his career protecting children. He's fucking apologizing to the girl that's fucking another guy. He's made a video talking about how some whore cheated on him. And instead of saying, boy, this chick's a bitch. Boy, she broke my trust. What an awful fucking person she is. He is told not only, <laughs> not only has he thanked her twice now, he was okay with it. It's all copacetic. Bunty King's cool with it, yo. He's down with the hip shit. You can fuck all the guys you want, baby. He's here for you. And it also kind of overlays a bit of jealousy. That's not all. Someone who used to be a Twitter reply guy who posted videos like the ones that I showed you prior in this video was suddenly losing it on live streams? Deoxys, are you brain dead? Is something wrong? Are you okay, bro? Did your mom not give you any pussy today? When you search up Bunty King today, you get... Oh, fuck, wait, that can't be right. Let me go incognito... Oh my god, that's my video. Oh dear. Now, Anand Verk, the guy who literally grew his channel doing commentary and political drama, would grow to scoff at the entire genre as a whole and pretend he's above it. That's, of course, how I, myself, and Bunty got into our own drama that caused this struggling e-celebrity quite a bit of backlash. Just take a look at this tweet. Look, Nicholas Diorio, I don't know who you are, and quite frankly, I don't give a fuck. You can screech about me all you want to your pathetic, emotionally stunted audience. You resort to drama content because you literally have nothing of value to offer anyone at all. Goodbye, kissy face emoji. Anand Verk, the YouTuber who had previously clowned on SJW journalists, like Carlos Maza, had an interesting take during a pivotal YouTube scandal. When a lot of noteworthy right-wing channels were losing monetization, Bunty took a controversial stance, stating that the only people being affected by the these new policy changes were those who repeatedly broke TOS. This was factually untrue as history channels were widely covered as channels that were in the crossfire. I also found it to be funny that Bunty King, an e-celebrity who was literally built from the hashtag free Bunty King movement as a result of his own wrongful suspension, would have a little bit of compassion for the guys dealing with this knee-jerk reaction from YouTube? I mean, is that too much to ask? Now knowing that he was in a group filled with people who hated these exact
Minecraft creators and even went as far as to encourage one of them to be doxxed, suddenly this makes a lot more sense. Anyways, myself and Bunty had our famous Twitter interaction. Basically, I was unhappy with his new points that were contradictory to things he would just say a year prior, and I laid the bait. Bunty naturally took the bait and had a meltdown leading to this clip from his Twitch stream. But someone's watching this and is like, yo, let's fuck with this guy. It's like, dude, just go and do something else, man. Like, we're chilling here, playing games. We're talking about games. I like these anonymous gifters gifting to the gift into the channels that are talking. Thank you very much, anonymous gifter. Thank you very much. Anonymous gifts, yeah. Anonymous gifts to uh to some uh to some drama channels, Aaron. The the same drama channels that I've been trying to pick to uh trying to trying to fuck with me, you know? Yeah, yeah. So they're gifting anonymous, they're gifting these anonymous subs to these dudes to like make it seem like there's like some trying to like get on them. I guess. Appreciate the money. Glad you guys are watching. Dr. Sherbago! Thank you for the, thank you for the follow. Wow, 37 people, you're a real inspiration to us all, Pussy King. Yo, Nicholas, I gotta ask you a question though, bro. Real quick, okay? Real quick. Nicholas, what are you doing here? What's the deal, dude? Prior to anything that you said to me on the weekend, I didn't know you existed and I didn't have any issues with you. But suddenly you got a problem. You have a problem with me. If you have a problem that's so, so real, I mean, I, what are you from the Jersey area? Dude, it's like, a, I would say, maybe seven to eight hour drive to Montreal, you can just come by, we can go for a drink. If you want, I could bring you to your favorite uh, Italian spots. I got it. I know a bunch of people in St. Leo and RDP. You can come by. I can show you around. What are you doing here, man? Come on. This, this would be me kissing your head after you bent the knee and you were like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pussy King. Show me the way. Show me the way, Pussy King. You showed me all around the town. I'd be like, I'll show you the way. Thank you, Lucas. Much appreciated. Clip that, you little rat. You little greasy rat. It's not an insult. It's just like the guy's in here trying to start shit, so it's like, come on, bro. A viewer of mine who enjoyed my Twitter argument with Bunty started donating Bunty a large sum of gifted subscribers and Bunty started to freak out about his free money so I stopped by and I'm really glad I did. Suddenly the once proud Twitter reply guy who fought trolls off with a smile and a laugh wasn't joking around anymore. It seemed like the Bunty King character by this point had completely disintegrated and now we're just speaking to a very angry Anand Verk. I appreciate our past Bunty. I really do. This is probably gonna be the last time I mention I'm gonna move on. But you were a fucking dick. In the following days, his friend Ricky Berwick published a tweet after seeing my disagreement with Bunty, basically saying that Bunty wasn't just out of line with me. He was actually a real asshole to his friends behind the scenes. These might not be people with a following, but they were your true fucking friends. I don't look up to bigger YouTubers and go, oh my god. They're my friends. Ricky was someone who really helped Bunty out and often replied to a bunch of his tweets. With Ricky's own massive Twitter audience, this was kind of a big deal. This helped Bunty's growth tremendously and Ricky was part of the reason why Bunty's career launched as well as it did. In response to this, Bunty had a nice stable reply and calmed down to really think things through. <laughs> Come on, you've seen the title, of course that's not true. In fact, Bunty released Ricky's private text messages and in some incredible lapse of judgment, what's inside of them made Bunty look fundamentally worse than he did before. In these texts here, Ricky's explaining to Bunty why he shouldn't have blocked their mutual friend, James Tempest, and how he hates how serious Bunty's become about everything. I'm not yeah. pissed right now, I'm just, just, I'm being serious right you're now. You're just being serious. <laughs> I'm just being you serious. Can't, wait, 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 You came on shot from the point to be yeah. serious. Bunty, of course, replies to this criticism by saying, all he does is talk about video games. <laughs> As the conversation progresses, Ricky gives Bunty advice that he should be less serious, and Bunty goes on a rant saying, but I think they're being mean-spirited. Ricky, have you seen my streams lately? Have you even looked at my fucking Twitter timeline? This is someone who fundamentally cannot deal with criticism or people not liking him. He went on to mention that he came out of a fucked up part of the internet that tried to ruin his life. He also mentions that many people saw what was happening and chose to look the other way. Huh? Kind of like you. 
So that's really the last drama in Nandvirk where Bunty King would find himself in during his brief stint as an e-celebrity. Aside from the uncomfortably weird sexual content that really raises flags after that whole cuck fiasco. Okay, when I was 12, I was, I was, I was coming, I was getting to this point where I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I feel things. I feel, uh, I feel, I feel something in my, in my pants. I'm just the guy that gives a good fuck and eats good pussy. That's pretty much what I am. All right. I enjoy eating white pussy. In fact, I get more white pussy than I get any other kind of pussy. And the reason why that happens is because white women find me attractive. I know it's fucked up, right? Yeah, guess what? I'm the guy that gets white pussy. I'm the guy that makes white women feel protected. <laughs> I want you to fucking piss on me. This is the one girl that could piss on me. Like, I would fucking <laughs> let her pee on my dick any day. The only reason why you know about the whole gay lover part is because you stood there in the fucking corner jerking off your tiny little dick while I boned Ricky in the ass. But this is the first girl, like, the first girl who, like, oh, I've done, like, ass play with. Like, it was fucking great. I'm a cock. <laughs> I'm a fucking cock. Eating her butt was amazing. It was just wonderful. And I walk out just, just completely naked, just completely naked towards my dad. Yeah, I think that's the first time I like first time I've ever done it. And uh, and I just remember that the first time we like did it, she was like, I was like, I was like, I want to eat your ass. Like I don't, she didn't ask me. I was like, no, <laughs> like I want to eat your ass. Like I've never wanted to do this. Like I let her fucking pee on me. I don't give a fuck, dude. Hello, Akbar! Aside from the uncomfortably weird sexual content, he was also a dick to his friends like Crouton T, Ricky Berwick, James Tempest, Young Crip. I've heard he even had a falling out with Ginger Heat and many others in the community who have commented on the situation. After Bunty and Ricky reached a point where they could put the beef behind them, I posted messages in support of Ricky because I knew that situation had bothered him a lot personally, and to my surprise, Bunty King responded, unprovoked telling me to shut the fuck up, which still remains as one of my favorite moments in my brief internet career. Then January this year happens, and then I had, uh, you know, then there was uh, that very public blowout that happened recently with Ricky, uh, which we sorted, by the way. We sorted that in private, privately, which is how it should have been, been from in the very beginning. It should have been private. It should have been an absolutely private affair because that's what it was. It was just a private disagreement and there was a lot of miscommunication. Ricky came out with this video saying that I had used him and used other people for, for clout and fame, which is so weird. And I was like, it was the exact opposite of whatever was happening. By this point of 2019, most of his socials were dead. My video had come out and he would spend the next couple of months complaining about mischaracterizations on Twitter. He also claimed there was some behind the scenes harassment of him, which if he's referring to me, well, they were never shown and never discussed further because that's another lie as well. So what do you do when you've lost your reputation, your fans, your friends, and your voice? What does a YouTuber in his 30s do when he's lost everything? Well, you eat bag of course in this live stream, Bunty appears to briefly cry about having to remove some of the money from his donation fund to buy a gaming PC and use it for bills and groceries. You don't like seeing me down? Well, I appreciate you not, not, not like seeing me down. Unfortunately, I, I, I am a little down. I'm definitely a little bit down. And uh, for me to act like I'm like happy or everything's good, it would be just a lie. Anyway, so the last few months I've been, uh, I've been, you know, working on this PC goal, right? Uh, to get a brand new PC so that I can be ready for Cyberpunk. Like, I really want this this piece to be ready for Cyberpunk because when I play Cyberpunk, I want it to play it in the best possible format. Like, it needs to be the best. Um, unfortunately, though, uh, because I live on my own, which is a great thing, I live on my own now with with Aaron. And, but you know, I've run into I've run into quite a few financial engagements that I need to take care of. And one of those, you know, happens to be bills, lots of bills, lots of fucking bills, groceries, things like that. So. I've had to dip in to those funds for the PC to kind of take care of that. And it's been really embarrassing for me to have to even say that because it's like, I feel like I've cheated people. And you don't go through, I don't want to do that. See, that's the other thing. I, I don't want to do that. I appreciate you saying that, Jack. That's very sweet of you to say that. But like, I don't want to like do a don't go for bills, you know? I don't want to like have to 
be like, all right, yo, guys, like, this is what I need to, to, to. He goes on to explain how he would never crowdfund for bills or ask his fans to pay for bills. But just a few weeks later, Bunty requested $1,400 from his fans to fund his vacation to find a job in Gamescom at the last possible minute. The post reads as follows. To keep it simple, my good friend Lauren Carter expressed interest in me going, and I feel like Gamescom would be an excellent professional opportunity for me to deepen my connections with people I've built a report with online, as well as form new friendships within the gaming industry. It would also be a great way to meet my European fans. I hear the trains in Europe are efficient and cheap. It would be real swell if we all got the opportunity to meet on a given day. Because this is a last minute thing, and prices for plane tickets fluctuate, I'm setting the current goal at $1,400. I'll update this as I go along, but I don't think it'll change, as there are people IRL who are willing to support me if I raise this amount. I'm incredibly fortunate for the communities that I've formed around me. I know this is short notice, but it would be cool if we could make this happen. But if people have donated money and I don't hit that goal, I would ideally like to apply the money towards bills and whatnot. However, if you'd like to take your money back because everything didn't go as planned, feel free to shoot me an email and give me any details I'd need in order to process a refund on my end. That's right, any and all funds will go directly to bills if they couldn't reach the ridiculously high donation goal in a little over a week. Funny enough, after laughing my ass off at the situation for a while, I was able to raise that much money just debating the rewired soul on Augie RFC's channel in a single live stream. But that was the beginning of the end for me. I was like, I, can't, I didn't really like the community that was around this stuff. I, they weren't honest. They weren't down to communicate. They weren't, they said they were down to communicate. They were, anytime, anytime I tweeted something out about being open and communicate uh, and communicative and, and understanding people and trying to see both sides, everyone was like, yeah, 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 Bunty, until it actually came to like, you know, them disagreeing with me, at which point it was like a complete blow up. And then, yo, 2018, September 2018 comes along. And then these fucking right-wing losers take that video from early 2017 and then they spin it and make it seem like it's part of the narrative today. And people, and here's the crazy thing, this would, this would actually really bit me. This would really bit me. What actually triggered me was the fact that people who thought they were smart, who had followed me after the summer of 2017, were like, oh, all of a sudden they, they were just like, oh wait, we don't like this guy anymore because the bigger, the bigger talking head had something negative to say about me, which is the most bullshit thing they could have possibly come up with. But Bunty wasn't just e-bagging, he was begging. He revealed that he saw getting a part-time job as a form of defeat. So he lived off $300 a month from Twitch and the salary of his girlfriend for about a year. It's funny you accuse me of using you to get a paycheck when you are clearly the one who needs the money. $300 a month on Twitch is your living wage? Jesus Christ, man. You invited me to Montreal? I'll invite you to New York. At least here you could qualify for unemployment. If I knew it was gonna be this bad, man, I would've donated you the revenue from the first video I made. Bunty had absolutely hit rock bottom, and I'll save you the many, many job tweets, with the exception of this one, because it's probably too fucking awful not to mention. At one point, Bunty was so sure, so sure he was being hired, he tweeted out an entire success story to his followers, only to have to delete it entirely after not getting hired embarrassingly. In fact, according to Bunty's LinkedIn page, he's back working at Apple part-time, which is hilarious to me because he's probably not even fit for the genius bar. Ha ha, get it? Genius bar. But speaking of his LinkedIn, that's entirely a different animal. And it reads as follows. Passionate about the video game industry, I spend my time foreseeing trends and anticipating marketing retention strategies for big game releases. Add me to your team if you want to understand what gamers are like, what gamers want, and how to make a product that's gonna hit the market with a bang. I'm a strategic and imaginative professional that accepts Excels in working with teams, poised for their next level of growth. The work I love to do circles around audience building, social strategy, community management, and conflict resolution. All of these have been utilized to propel my online presence to where it is now, and are at the core my true passion, bringing value to the communities that I care about. I'm really good at playing and analyzing video games, writing marketable content for digital media, video editing, evaluating
evaluating trends and growing communities. I have a knack for crafting stories and developing creative concepts that have strong hooks. Also, I can fix your computer. Listen, if you're citing your skills on social media as the reason why your online presence is where it is now, bro, your social media is dead. I don't think you're excellent at any of the things that you just listed. Also, if your job resume says that you're excellent at playing video games, you're probably fucked for the rest of your life. Like, that's just a general rule of thumb. That's a general rule of life. Then after months of taking pot shots at detractors, similar to what you'd find in other lolcow creators like DSP or Wings of Redemption, Bunty just outright deleted his Twitter entirely. He left the website that made him famous, and that's probably the moment where, if he hadn't died before, the Bunty King character truly died that day. But that wasn't it for Bunty. Oh no, he actually spent time on his podcast taking shots at his new girlfriend who had apparently recently broken things off with him. I, I'm, I've been shook, been shook. Like I did not expect 2020 to start the way that it did. All right, I didn't expect a lot of things in my life to happen the way that it did. Um, I, so I've been spending a lot of time thinking about what I really want out of life and what I need. And I realized that what I need uh, and, and possibly what everyone needs is stability because I don't think you can truly really put yourself out there unless you're stable. Relationships that I invested in and invested in so passionately kind of fell apart because, you know, the investment was one way. Um, you know, there's, there's people I spent the good part of the last year uh, investing in and, 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 and falling in love in and uh, falling in love with, sorry, falling in love with, sorry, falling in love with, sorry, falling in love with, sorry. And, uh, and they're just people that just, that are just no longer around, you know? And so, so it's really kind of put me in a position where I'm just like, well, if they weren't around. How he could be upset with someone who let him play video games and play dress up YouTuber for an entire year is beyond me. It also clearly shows he hasn't learned a single fucking thing since he created the I'm a cuck, let's talk video. Leave your fucking relationships offline. Jesus Christ, you're not 50 cent. You don't need to sneak diss your ex-girlfriend and ginger heat in a live stream. I'd also be right robbing my viewers if I didn't take the time to show them Bunty's most recent Facebook post. I had originally wrote a long post about how I wanted to navigate all my relationships going forward, how I feel like we've digitized our identities and put more value into how we're perceived instead of taking the time to build intentional, meaningful relationships and present ourselves as we are, and how I really won't be making any time for any people that make me feel anything short of amazing. But I think I'll just leave it at thanks for the birthday wishes. <laughs> Oh no! Hey Bunty, I wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I hope all is well. Ah! Ah! Hey Bunty, I know we haven't spoken in a long time, but I, I wanted to say happy birthday, man. Ah! I'll kill you! You'll die! <laughs> you, you what? You what? Happy birthday, Bunty King. You're my favorite person. Ah! No! This isn't fake! This is how he responded to his friends wishing him a happy birthday. Because it's totally normal when friends reach out going, oh yeah, hey man, just happy birthday. I know we haven't hung out for a while. And then you respond with, I will settle for no less than people who make me feel amazing. Dude, like what the fuck is wrong with you? Jesus fucking Christ, man. This dude has transformed into a fucking android. He's completely lost touch with reality. It's clear, at least to me, that he's become such a fractured man. Man, I just hope other aspiring YouTubers watch this and realize it doesn't have to go this way. You don't have to sit on Facebook and write essays showing everyone how much you're still bitter about losing your e-fame. No one sees a constant rise forever, and eventually your time in the spotlight will run out, and that's what happened to Bunty really fast and really hard. I think the best note to end off with is exactly where we started. Gobble gobble, Turkey Tom. Hey, I checked out your timeline. It seems like, uh, you, you feel like quitting when people with low quality content or low effort content get more views than you. So uh, how about you do yourself and everybody else a favor and just fucking quit YouTube already? How about that, huh? Because I can guarantee you that that won't be the first time you see low effort content get more views than you. It happens all the fucking time. So worrying about other people's content and how much effort they put into it is absolutely stupid. The best thing that you can do is put more effort into yours and then grow your fucking brand or whatever the fuck you're trying to do. All right, buddy? 
Take it easy. This video is a perfect encapsulation of Bunty King. When it first came out, it was funny, but a true criticism that might have seemed too harsh, but it was a form of tough love. The whole point of that video was to open dialogue, mm -hmm. all right? But today when we watch it, it's clear Bunty unlearned all of these lessons, and ironically enough, he tells Tom to not go worry about other people's content when he's gone on similar rants discounting me for my drama content. There's nothing of value to offer anyone. Hey guys, Future Nick here. I was wrapping up the video and Bunty had another meltdown. I guess he realized what was coming. During my research, I came across a post on his Patreon that indicated why he was taking his videos down. In an effort to try to fact check my material, I donated to his Patreon to unlock the tier and I saw that my explanations were satisfactory. After Bunty saw that I had donated him $5, he decided to not only send me back my money, but also false flag my Patreon account for bullying and harassment. Let me be clear. I made no effort to contact Bunty, not through comments, not through DMs. I made no effort to threaten Bunty in any way. I didn't violate their terms of service, and Bunty still decided to false flag my account. On top of that, Anand took to his Facebook page to make a lengthy post about how he believes me making this critical video of him, a public figure mind you, apparently classifies as targeted harassment. Somebody who looks you up across social media websites is somebody who's conducting research, Bunty. My arguments have been constructed by things that you have said and done. Nothing here is a narrative I've created. In fact, many of my points are directly quoting you. You claim that you haven't attempted to engage with me. However, you've been complaining about my video, subtweeting me since September. It's just a nice point to remember that this guy used to criticize others for a living and troll the shit out of people. He literally has made videos shit-talking people on podcasts too, similar to what I'm doing right now. This guy was one of the top Twitter reply guys in the community, and now he's screaming targeted harassment about a video that spends 15 minutes explaining why he succeeded and taking a look at some of the positives to be fair and objective. If he didn't want to be in the spotlight, he should have probably became the Burger King and continued writing food pieces for BuzzFeed. His friends are recommending that he files a cease and desist on me to prevent this video from coming out. Joke's on them. I don't think the Apple Store Genius Bar pays enough to launch a Canada to US lawsuit. Oh, what's that? The Jeff Holiday? Apparently Jeff takes a holiday from free speech. He also mentioned in his response that right-wing dickheads started the hate wave, and that went way beyond trolling. And yet you were okay with distributing Coach Red Pill's docs? Lastly, this video doesn't exist to make you feel bad about yourself. Your life choices have led to you feeling bad about yourself. The overwhelming feeling that your internet career has ended and it will never be the same is the reason why you feel bad about yourself. I make YouTube videos. They are not designed to damage you on a personal level or be anything more than online entertainment. No matter how hard you flag this video, even if it gets taken down, it's not bullying and harassment and you just look like a pussy. So that got pretty deep for a moment and I'd like to lighten the mood before our summary for this video. Here's the clip I found that I initially was not going to include in the video. However, now that he's decided to flag my Patreon, I'm happy to include it. This is the same Bunty King who defended YouTube demonetizing and terminating right-wing creators over the Vox adpocalypse when the word queer was used by Steven Crowder for Carlos Maza, or gay wonk. I remember I was watching a Wes Anderson movie. It was such a good movie, so fucking good. But at one point, Adrian Brody's character gets up looks at Ralph Fine and he says, who, that faggot? And I died of laughter. I, I'm, I roar with laughter. Everyone else is dead silent. They don't think that's funny at all. I thought it was hilarious because it was like the guy was just full blown, just called someone a faggot. Subscribe to Lord Vega. It was my favorite scene. It was one of my favorite scenes. The guy was like straight up got an out of nowhere called him a faggot. I was like, what the? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? This isn't some kind of gotcha moment because Bunty's used a gamer word or two in his career. The reason I'm talking about this is because it's literally the reason the skeptic community became so hated on YouTube. There are so many political creators who will just jump into situations they couldn't give a shit about just because it's a profitable avenue. Guys like Ian Miles Chung have played far left SJW, centrist, and far right because there's money in having almost seasonal opinions. Some of these guys are so soft, their political ideology 
sociology is directly proportional with who's being nice to them at a given time. It's become less about what does Bunty truly believe, and more about who's been nice to him lately. That's why so many of these former or remaining active skeptics seem so different than the content they published in the recent past. Content that was lucrative in 2016 isn't what's going to pay the bills in 2019. Not everyone was like this, however, there was a large amount of apolitical grifters who spent their time collecting from PayPig fans who didn't realize the facade. To summarize, so Bunty King was excellent in debates until people found out he wasn't. He was known for the amazing way he dealt with criticism until it came out that he couldn't. Bunty's laugh was contagious and he was always the guy who was able to take a joke off the chin until people found out that was fabricated too. Bunty claimed he'd never beg for money to pay his bills until he did that too. Bunty claimed he was trying to open a dialogue until we found out behind the scenes Bunty wasn't doing that either. Bunty made drama content for years and now he says that people who make drama content have nothing to offer the world. Bunty boasted about his numbers and his great smart fan base until he got tired of them and told them to unfollow. So if Bunty had none of those characteristics, what did he have? Shut up! Shut the fuck up! I got a nice face, get out of here, it's the one thing I got. Leave me alone. Bunty was a grifter who went where the money and success was. He was a social climber who would dump all of his friends in a heartbeat. And he was a scumbag who not only sucked money out of his girlfriend, but he tried to get his fan base to give him the trip to go to a gaming convention in the hopes that he could find a job in the journalism community that already blacklisted him years ago. Anand Virk claimed his Bunty King character wasn't a character until the moment he stopped using the name Bunty King and made it perfectly clear this wasn't the truth either. And that's why we gather together today, to remember Bunty King, to remember Anand Virk. When we look back at Bunty, odds are we won't remember a lot of the good. What we will remember is mostly the bad. Anand hasn't given us any reason to respect him after all of this time. He's basically become a caricature of himself, and he's shown to be the very type of person that Bunty King would have bashed back in 2017. People change, and that's true, but this was always who Bunty was, and for for that reason, we gather here today, in February of 2020, to remember how the Bunty King channel died. At least we can find solace in the fact that despite his numerous shortcomings, he was still more successful than his friend Deodor Anthony. This is the end of a lol cow, Bunty King. Well, it's a dumpster fire because it's loaded with people who fashion themselves to be intellectuals. But really, they're not intellectuals. They're just a bunch of fucking assholes with a webcam and a mic. And it's so fucking annoying. It's so fucking annoying to see these people talk. They just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. But they never actually do anything. But I think that essentially all the issues come down to one word, and, and, th and that word is ego. Uh, I guess two words, egos and personas. <laughs> And egos, while on their own, are totally cool. An ego that's unchecked turns into something very stupid. And an ego that's unchecked is also very fragile. Yeah, you're a dumb rat. You see this face? This is the face of someone that's not angry at all. This is the face of someone looking at you and calling you a fucking dumb rat because you're being a dumb rat and I don't know what else to say to you because you're a fucking dumb rat. Any girl would be lucky to have me. I'm not saying I'm God's gift to women. I'm just saying that if that relationship is happening, if there's a relationship involved or she's open to dating me and I'm open to dating her, that girl is fucking lucky, all right? And I'm lucky too because at the end of the day, hey man, good partners are hard to come by. But they're fucking lucky. There's no, like, no doubt in my mind that they're lucky because I bring something that's completely different. My friends have said this about me. They they just know me as a person that's been more open and more for forward, more real with people than anybody else. We live in a world where people hide behind social media with these fucking nice stories like, I got married yesterday, oh I bought a fucking dog, oh everything's okay in my fucking life, sick. Not really, everything's falling apart. I'm the one that's gonna be real and tell you that holy shit, things aren't really that good or things are really amazing in this aspect. That's what I do. It's cool, he's great, I'm happy for him, he fucking has all this shit, good. Mm. But just don't criticize people for actually hustling, you yeah. cunt. I'll kill, I'll kill. I guarantee it. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, clan? Let's go ahead and get 200,000 likes on this fucking video right now, motherfuckers! <laughs> when I was 12, I was getting to this point where I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I feel things. I feel, uh, I feel, I feel something in my, in my pants. 